legends, we could be legends Etched in the stone, forever on thrones Histories made in the moments Heroes collide, it's all over And welcome to episode one of WA Solo uh, Or as I like to call it, One Solo Come up to some sections like this with the Nothing will stop us against all the odds, but just like we promised, we came to fight. Yeah, we came to four wheel drive touring. There you go, Steve. The stickers on the car, there's one on the other side. G'day guys, Paul, Perth 4 Before Adventures, and welcome to episode one of WA Solo, uh, or as I like to call it, Was Solo. And here I am on our very first track that I'm gonna show you. Now, what am I doing out here? Basically, in our beginners group, we get asked a lot about uh, beginners tracks. Uh, can you do them solo? Good beginners tracks around Perth that are easy to drive and are they safe to do on your own? So here I am at the Gilderton Lighthouse track and that big tall thing behind me is of course the Gilderton Lighthouse. Now that was built in 1983 at a cost of about $240,000. Um, it is the, it was the only working lighthouse between Fremantle and Durian Bay and uh, it was in fact the last built in Western Australia and it is in fact built on the site of where they found some treasure that they reckon came from a Dutch wreck uh, that uh, sank back in the 1600s just north of here. Some gold coins apparently that were found around in this spot somewhere and this is where they built the lighthouse. So the track starts just to my right. I am up in the little car park section of said lighthouse and the track starts just to my right and uh, we'll go through a few things and then we'll head on up the track but first we'll have a quick look at this lighthouse eh? Right, guys just a couple of things first up before you do embark on a track solo um, this track is relatively easy but there are a couple of spots that you need to be careful of and some important things when you're out solo four-wheel driving one is uh, make sure you've got the correct recovery gear on you um, shovel sandboards tracks max tracks treads whatever you want to call them uh, recovery boards um, some shackles a snatch strap and at least one rated recovery point you must make sure you have this equipment on you because if you get stuck um, you're going to need to get yourself out or you're going to need to have the gear to be able to attach to someone else who comes along who doesn't have any recovery gear to help you out the other things which is a no-brainer a tire deflator because 
no matter what anybody tells you, always deflate your tyres when going off-road. Uh, for three main reasons, and I'm sure there are many others. One, it protects your tyres from getting damaged. Two, it protects the track from getting damaged. And most importantly, it stops you from getting stuck because a lot of people will wait till they get stuck before they let their tyres down. And all this does is dig holes in the track, which makes it worse for the next person coming along. And you can potentially damage your tyre by running over rocks and sticks because your tyres haven't deflated, they've got no deflection, and therefore you can damage your tyres. But, and the other thing is, of course, no brainer, an air compressor. And when you are out on your own, most importantly, make sure you've got plenty of this stuff in your fridge or in your esky or in your car because uh, you never know when you're going to get stuck and water is a necessity for survival. And I say that because um, I took a trip with a few people to a place known as Wilbinga and one of the people didn't quite listen to some instructions and went off on the beach, snapped a CV and got stuck on the beach. It took us nine hours to recover this vehicle off the beach and I had two bottles of water in the car and I can tell you Halfway through that recovery, I was wishing I had a hell of a lot more water in the car, I can tell you, because I was sipping warm water by the end of the day. It was plus 30 degrees and it was horrible. So always make sure you've got plenty of water in your car just in case you get stuck. So anyway, I'm going to let some air out of these tyres and we're going to hit the track, which is just over there. Now I've gone straight down to 16 psi um, and you'll see why once we get into the track the uh, first challenging section is very very soft so I'm not messing around and going straight down to beach pressures. As you can see, that first section there is pretty soft and uh, it's quite soft and chewed up throughout here at the moment and it's usually not this bad but uh, that's a sign that a lot of people have been out four wheel driving so, uh, and I think we're coming up to the other section that I mentioned shortly which is just around the corner here if I'm not mistaken yep, here it is, so we'll get out and we'll have a look at this Okay, so let's get out and I'll just show you why this section can catch a lot of people out, especially if you haven't floated your tyres enough. Um, I've literally come from down there and you can see by the amount of sand that's moved as to how soft that is. But you've literally got to get around this corner where it's really, really soft and get up that hill there which the hill doesn't look like much and if you've got enough momentum it's fine but uh, some people tend to come around the corner here lose their momentum because they're not sure which way to go 
and then they try and floor it up there and they get stuck and that's why it gets so full of holes so I think I can hear a car coming now so uh, I'll get set up and we'll shoot up there Set and captured all my camera gear and brought the drone in and uh, now I'll take the handbrake off as well because that always helps <laughs> now that probably looked a little bit easier um, for me I've done it many times before so I know what to expect I started from a slightly different position because I had to uh, set up all the camera gear and stuff but uh, for the uneducated you'd come around that corner as I said slow down and you'd lose all your momentum and you pretty much get stuck in the sand. So uh, that's about the hardest part of the track. There's a couple of little interesting rock climbs further up the track, but uh, we'll just cruise along now and take in a little bit of the track. Now you'll come up to some sections like this where the track splits, track goes left there, track goes right there. Basically as long as you are pointing north any one of these tracks will take you through to seabird. The closer you are to the coast, or the ocean I should say, the more chance you've got of finding yourself on the beach. Now I know where that track goes, it eventually links up with this track and I'll show you when we get there but I'm going to take this track because this is the more beginner friendly one this one from memory takes you down around a fence line under a trees under some trees under a trees under some trees and uh, back up and it will meet up with this track if my memory serves me correctly now I have been wrong once before so actually I've been wrong many times before so we'll see how that goes Okay, so as I was saying before, that's the bit along the fence line where you go underneath the trees and it does link up with another fence line along here a bit before we get back towards the coast. Now it does head away from the beach a bit, 
into that's private property obviously on the other side of that fence line and uh, then as we work our way closer to Seabird we of course end up back closer towards the coast so uh, that's the first bit of the track done let's see what the rest of it looks like now there are some sections along here that are quite breathtaking and if you look at the ocean this morning it is as calm as anything because there is hardly any wind out here so uh, there's a little section here where you can pull off the edge of the track take it all in some rocky outcrops are there I might just shoot the drain up the coast just to show you what it looks like There are some sections through this track, uh, such as that one back there, where there are a few rocks on the track. So another very good reason to let your tyres down, because uh, that's where protecting your tyres comes in, over rocks, and excuse me if I feel a bit puffed, but doing this solo, of course, I'm the only cameraman, so I have to keep running back and getting the camera, which is not really too just normal to what I normally do. Anyhow. Um, yeah, some, some sections where there are some rocks, so just take it easy over those rocks. You don't need to go barreling through. And there are some sections going uphill where there are a few wombat holes. Again, you don't have to go flying up them. It's not that soft. You can crawl up quite easily and uh, it's no big deal at all. It's quite a, quite a pleasant little Sunday drive, except today's Saturday, but never mind. We will improvise. We'll pretend it's Sunday. <laughs> Okay, let's, uh, now I know there's a little hill climb up here with a beautiful lookout, so we'll make our way up there, and uh, we'll have a look out there, if you'll pardon the pun. <laughs> My voice is gasoline, I'm catching on fire, like an ever There's a bit of a rocky section here. You've got two ways you can go. I'll just spin you around. That's the more challenging line. Some slightly bigger rocks to jump up. 
and that is the easier line for those that don't have much of a lift or don't have very big tyres. So uh, I might take that one because you can actually go off to the edge where it's not going to be. I mean, you can pretty much do about three different lines through there. You can go up through the middle, it'll make it even more interesting. Off to the left or up that one there. So uh, we'll take that one there and see how we go. There we go, that was relatively easy again. Um, you do have to be very careful with little rock steps like that because you tend to get a little bit caught up on one and you give it a little bit more power to get up it and before you know it you go flying up and you, if you're like me and lack a little bit of clearance underneath you end up bottoming it out, out on something. But uh, you choose your lines, pick the right way to go. Sometimes you drive around something because it's just not worth damaging your vehicle and uh, sometimes you want to give it a go. But uh, yeah, that was pretty easy. Um, the track is now sort of smoothed out a little bit and I'm pretty sure the next little challenge is the uh, hill climb up to the lookout. So uh, we will see you there. Okay, so here we are at the, what I call the lookout. There is a sign up there, which I'm guessing points to it, but that's the hill. Now it doesn't look like much. Um, and again, to the experienced four wheel driver, it isn't, but for the beginner, who's never done this track before and never done this sort of driving before again you've got a soft corner there where people have obviously hammered it to get around the corner and you've got a blind corner so you're not going to be quite sure what's around there until you actually get out and have a look which is why I say um, if you're not sure get out have a look walk the track like I am doing now walk the track have a look there's a couple little holes there no big deal nothing to worry about quite a simple drive really so uh, we'll put the car into gear and we'll head up there So I think I peaked just a little bit too early there. That is not in fact the hill that takes you to the lookout. I'll tell you what, after running up and down that hill, I really need this. But no, I thought that was the hill that took you to the lookout. But uh, either that or it's changed so much. The lookout's not really there anymore, but there's a, there's a hill that you go up where there's an open section at the top where you can park up. We've had about 20 vehicles parked up there at one stage and have a good look out over the ocean. So uh, hopefully I haven't missed it, but it's very easy to do in places like this because you can do a trip like this five times and do it five different ways each time because there are quite a few options, different tracks to take. There's a track there that comes out somewhere. Um, they all end up in the same place, but you can literally take a different route each time you come through here and that's the beauty of areas like this you don't have to keep doing the same thing all the time um, you can explore and you can adventure as we like to call it find your way around have a look around and sometimes you can come across some interesting and really rewarding spots and when you do drive past the track and go oh i wonder where that goes go down and have a look it might go nowhere but you might be rewarded with um a beautiful little spot at the end of it that might look over a cliff or a nice little clearing or there might be some old ruined shack there or something. Um, the track was obviously put there for a reason um, and it obviously leads somewhere. And uh, yeah, you can also find some interesting little camp spots as well at the end of some of these tracks. However, out here, you cannot camp. 
you uh, cannot legally camp anywhere basically north of Perth on the beach or in the coastal area until you get up near or past Cervantes. I think there's a couple of overflow spots up near Cervantes, up past Cervantes, but Durian Bay is pretty much the closest coastal spot you can camp north of Perth. So there you go. All right, enough of me babbling on. Let's see if we can find this lookout. Yeah, we'll be remembered for this. We came to fight. Oh, we came to take what was meant to be ours. There's no place to hide. Oh, yeah, it's written all over the stars. Nothing will stop us against all the odds, but just like we Okay, well it appears I have completely missed that look at. I must have driven around it. I've got a bit of oncoming traffic here and I think he may have pulled out the way to let me through. So it's just a single car. So, all oh, good. Because I can see Seabird just up over the edge there. So, I'll just give the man a wave. Thank you for pulling over, sir. And, uh, yeah, either that or sometimes these coastal areas change so much. I mean, it's been probably 12 months since I've been through here and uh, vegetation of course grows and wind erodes the sand and blows it away and all the scenery tends to change um, but again I might have just completely taken a different track which is all part of the adventure anyway I can see some houses just up in front of me which means we are close to our destination And there you go guys, that there behind me is the town of Seabird. So we have made it through all the way from Gildeton through to Seabird quite easily on my own, completely solo and basically no issues whatsoever. Um, didn't get stuck anywhere, didn't struggle anywhere. Um, again, I kind of know the area, but it is pretty much a beginner's track. We took our first group of beginners through this track and they all had an absolute ball so uh, pretty much from here you can go through Seabird if you want to back up to Indian Ocean Drive drive across Indian Ocean Drive and go down to Moore River if you want to there's some beautiful picnic spots down there which I might do that in another video if uh, you'd like to see that and while we're on that subject let me know uh, are there any tracks that you would like to see me do solo um, within reason and the first person that says the power lines look out because <laughs> i'm not doing the power lines on my own uh, i don't like the power lines to be honest with you but uh yeah if there's any tracks out there that you're not quite sure about and uh drop a comment below i don't mind checking them out as long as i'm capable of doing it and my vehicle is capable of doing it um otherwise i have to take someone with me and then that kind of defeats the purpose of what solo doesn't it so there you go all right i'm going to air these tires up I'll quickly show you uh, what Seabird looks like from the air and then we're going to get out of here.
Alright guys, well there you go, all aired up and ready to head home. Now pretty much I left home at 7.30, I live in the northern suburbs of Perth. It took me about an hour, just under an hour to get to Gilderton and even though I haven't, I always do that, I don't wear a watch but yet I look at the time. Time is 11 o'clock, so I left home at 7.30, it's now 11 o'clock, so that's not bad time. Quick morning four-wheel drive uh, and some pretty scenic stuff. Now there's some great fishing spots down there too. So if you're a keen fisherman, not a bad spot to go fishing as well. There's a few people fishing along there, a few good spots to pull off the track, little nodes that you can park up, set yourself up and fish there for the morning or the night if you want to. Now, before I do go, shout out to Steve and Kaz, Mud Ducks four-wheel drive touring. There you go, Steve. The sticker's on the car. There's one on the other side. And if you can't see that with this camera, because my big camera died, Halfway along the track, I forgot to charge the other battery up last night, so I'm on the GoPro with the new microphone attached to my inside my shirt. So shout out to Steve and Kaz, Mud Ducks Four Wheel Drive Touring. They're based in New South Wales. They do a lot of uh, good, fun adventures through the south, through New South Wales, um, all through the air. I don't know the areas through there too much, but I'm sure if you head on over to Mud Ducks Four Wheel Drive Touring, check out Steve's channel and uh, you'll see what they are all about. And if you can't see that sticker, I'll slot one in somewhere around here, okay? Um, on that note, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, if you've got some tracks you want me to check out for you under the Was Solo banner, uh, these won't be a weekly thing or a fortnightly thing. We'll slot one in every now and then. Um, but if you've got any tracks you want me to check out, drop a comment below. Um, if you like our videos and content and you want to support our channel, please hit the subscribe and uh, follow us. Hit that notification bell so you know when our videos are out to watch. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on our next adventure.